Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are gonna dive back into the comic books of Flash Thompson, AKA Agent Venom. And uh, I'm sorry, you know, I know I get behind on a lot of stuff. Lately, I just think I needed a break, uh, just temporarily, just to kind of focus on stuff because with my work schedule, it's just been hard to schedule things. Like I literally get my work schedule on Sundays and I have no idea if I'm gonna even work that next Monday. So it's hard for me to plan things like Parasite podcasts and other stuff. So luckily, you know, I have, that's hopefully going to change soon. Hopefully schedule will be made a little bit more in advance coming up. Um, but for right now, it's just been tough. And for the past month, it's been really tough. And I kind of take hours where I can get them because, you know, some days I'll be scheduled for like a Friday and then they're like, hey, you know, business is dead. We don't need you to come in. So I lose a whole day of pay. But then since I didn't plan for it off, I pretty much will be like, well, I worked yesterday. So let me just sleep because I don't feel too good. Uh, this is a physical demanding job for, for me, especially with my health stuff. So I tend to just, you know, sleep on my days off for the most part, at least during the daytimes. Um, and I try to get some stuff done at night. So again, I apologize for just being behind on stuff. And uh, that means when I'm behind on making videos, uh, especially videos like this, it's because I'm behind on reading stuff. So I've been very behind on reading lately too. So, uh, so yeah, when I don't make time to read and then actually these issues, I did read once and I was going to do a video. Then I got called into work and then my schedule got all messed up and that was like three or four weeks ago. <laughs> and so now I'm re-recording it because I had to reread the book because I already kind of forgot some of the stuff that happened in it. So uh, so yeah, so it's been kind of a up and down and it's been a lot of chaos. So I appreciate those who stuck with it or are sticking with it. And I promise, you know, we'll try to get back on track here as soon as possible. As soon as schedules start being made more consistently and in advance, I can you know, plan my days off better and things like that. So, um, so for here today, we're going to talk about issues nine through 12 of the, uh, you know, the Rick Remender Venom run, Agent Venom run. Uh, so, uh, so this book, it picks up right where Spider Island left off. Issue nine is kind of, um, a self-contained story and I can't remember the artist's name on it. So I'm going to put the credits up for the whole book. I think Lan Medina does the art for issues 10 through 12. But I can't remember the, maybe Stefano, I can't remember. I can't remember who the artist is on this issue, so I apologize. So I'll put that information up right there. And this issue is really well done, actually. The art's very great, and the um, the storyline is really neat because it's basically picking up right where Spider Island left off. Last we know, you we had Flash Thompson who left Betty in the hospital room where his dad died. And he couldn't bring himself to tell, you know, call his mom and tell her that, you know, her, you know his father died. And uh, he couldn't even kind of be there with him in his last moments, uh, technically. But Betty was, and I guess, uh, you know, his father, Flash's father, you know, get, wanted a message to be, you know, delivered to Flash. So, you know, and Betty wrote down the, the message, basically. She cleaned it up a little bit because, you know, obviously the guy was sick and he was dying. Uh, so she cleaned up the message a little bit and uh, and she gets to read that message to Flash in this book. Hopefully I didn't say Eddie. I feel like I said Eddie somewhere. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so Flash starts off and it, he goes to check on Betty and she's not around. And so he's like, okay, like uh, she's not at the hospital. Hopefully she's safe. Everyone got turned into spiders. Like I hope she's okay. Like, you know, last time I checked on her, I left her here. Hopefully nothing happened. Uh, the hospital looks like it's kind of back to normal, but you know, but who knows? So he's kind of starting off by looking for Betty, but then um, this guy in a tank shows up and I can't remember his name. He has a really lame name. So I'll, I'll pop it up right there. I want to say it's like, Oh man, I can't remember. It's like the something, you know, like, uh, you know, the, the menacer or something like that. I can't remember. He has a, he has kind of a silly name and uh, he's driving in on this impenetrable tank and, uh, and he's coming in to rob banks and he's like, yeah, I robbed like three banks in 30 minutes. And one thing I like that um, Remender does a lot is he adds some gallows humor to, um, you know, to Venom, like to this run. And what I mean by that is like, it's things that he builds up to be kind of a joke, but you don't feel right laughing at it. Um, or it makes you a little bit more invested in that moment. And it's like a dark joke. So you're not really supposed to laugh at it, but it's definitely a dark sense of humor. That's what gallows humor is. And so what I like is that there's this moment where this guy who he was like, he gets up, he's naked, he's in the middle of the street and he goes and he finds some clothes and he puts them on and he's like, okay, you know, like I was just turned into a spider. Like I, you know, my parents told me not to move to the big city. Like he's some guy from like the Midwest or something. And he's like, yeah, I was told not to move to the big city. And my parents told me it was a bad idea. And then I get here and I get turned into a giant spider. Like my first week in town, like, oh my God, my bad luck. And then right after he puts on some clothes, 
he gets run over by the villain with the tank. So again, like you're not really supposed to laugh at that, but at the same time, it's, there's a dark sense of humor to it uh, that's very gallows humor. And I like that because that reminds me of things like The Crow. I thought The Crow had a lot of uh, gallows type humor in it as well. Um, like Milton, things like that, like it references to Milton and stuff. So I really liked this issue where, you know, uh, not because of those moments, but because this guy who runs, he ran over this, you know, this villain who has his tank, he runs over this one guy. He's like, all right, I robbed three banks in 20 minutes. Uh, this is great. This is my last one and I'm getting out of town. And that's when, you know, Flash comes across him and Flash is like, as Agent Venom is like, okay, I got to go in and I got to stop this guy, you know, and he just ran over somebody. So I got to stop him. So he goes in, he tries to fight back. He tries to fight against his tank and the tank gets away from him. So, you know, he goes in pursuit. So it's basically like a chase sequence, you know, like Agent Venom is pursuing this giant tank through New York City. And this tank guy crosses one too many lines when he uh, he's coming up and you see this mom holding her little boy. He's like maybe eight year old boy and she's holding him and you think Venom's going to come in and swing and save him at the last minute or Captain America might because Captain America was there during Spider Island or maybe Spider-Man will or someone will come and save this mom and this kid and surprisingly no one does and they get run over by this tank and that sets off Flash Thompson and he goes full rage and becomes Venom the teeth come out and everything he's ripping the tank apart you know and he, he's working his way into the the inside of the tank to get the guy the guy shakes him off temporarily thinks he got rid of him gets back to his base and that's when you find out that you know Flash was hanging on underneath the tank uh, kind of recovering from his wounds and then tears the guy apart, and then the guy's begging, like, please don't kill me, please don't kill me. And Flash is sitting there thinking, like, even part of his human mind is kind of trying to creep into the Venom personality, like, look, you know, is this is this guy worth killing? I mean, yes, he did kill a, a woman and her son. They're never going to have another birthday party again. They're never going to get each other presents. She's never going to see him graduate from school or anything like that. They're never going to grow old. Like, uh, you know, yes, he deserves to die, but is there justice in that? And Venom's like, yeah, there's enough justice for me. And so Venom just bites his head off, bites this guy's head off, this villain, and then spits the head out, or put chunks of it out. Um, and then, you know, Flash is kind of like okay with it. He's like, well, yeah, maybe there's some small sense of justice because otherwise this guy's gonna go to jail and, you know, and everything. And, and the guy's begging for his life. He's like, please don't kill me, please don't kill me. And uh, and Venom full on bites his head off. And I I don't know, I, I kind of like agree with Venom a little bit on that one. Like, I mean, even just crushing the guy with the, the tank, uh, you know, so having him killed, one innocent bystander already at the beginning of the story and then kill the mother and son uh, definitely crosses a lot of lines. I, I think most, you know, anti-heroes will have a rule where like you don't kill women and children and that's usually the line they have and clearly Flash has that line. Like he already didn't like that the guy got killed at the beginning but then by adding on the woman and child that was just too far for Flash and Venom apparently too. So Venom's, you know, tapped into Flash's rage in that moment, took over and they killed this guy. So um, it's just a standalone issue and at the end it has Flash going back to his apartment. He gives the suit back to the government uh, and then goes back to his apartment and hangs out with Betty and she reads that last message from Flash's dad to Eddie. Uh, I mean, to Eddie. <laughs> to, to F Betty uh, reads the last message from uh, Flash's dad to Flash. Uh, yeah, so Betty and Eddie sound a lot alike. I, because I, I'm trying to, like, as I'm talking, I'm thinking, like, did I just say Eddie or Betty? Um, so Betty Brandt, uh, Flash's girlfriend. So, uh, so that was, like, a nice moment at the end there. Um, but, uh, but you have Flash even saying, like, tell her, tell her the truth, tell her what's going on with you. She, you know, you, you because she's asking him, like, hey, did you call your mom yet? And he's like, no, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to tell her what happened to my father, you know, and her her husband. Um, he, he seemed like he was getting back on the track to do better. And then he dies like this. And uh, and I, you know, wasn't there with him in his last moments. And she's like, well, I have this letter, you know, that he, of his last words. So I'd like to read it to you. So there's like a nice little bit of closure there. Um, so in issue 11, so 11 uh, to 12, 11, uh, 12, yeah, 10, 11, and 12. Issues 10, 11, and 12 are kind of one story, but they also set up like the next two stories um, in, in that's going to come up with Remender because Remender's run is going to be ending after like the next two or three arcs. So there's only going to be like two or three more Flash Thompson videos for Remender's run. Then we get into the Colin Bunn stuff and the Secret Avenger stuff and the Thunderbolt stuff. And that kind of plays into this as well because Red Hulk shows up. Uh, but we'll get into that here in a minute. Uh, but we start off and we're at the funeral of Flash Thompson's father. And you have uh, Peter Parker's there and, uh, and Mary Jane. And then you also have Betty's obviously always there and Flash's mom is there. 
And uh, also Jack-O-Lantern is there. And Jack-O-Lantern is kind of stalking nearby, like watching from a distance, you know, watching the funeral. And Flash knows he's there. And uh, they actually have a confrontation in this, not like a fit altercation, but just, you know, Jack-O-Lantern comes up and he introduces himself to Betty, you know, and as, as you know, Jack's face got messed up because, uh, you know, Flash put a grenade in his mask at one point in the early issues. So his teeth are blown out, his face is all scarred up. And so, uh, you know, so he walks up and introduces himself to Betty as a friend of Flash's and even says, oh, and, uh, and Mo Mosul, uh, the, I guess the, air, the territory they were in, he's like, uh, Flash saved my life over there. And he goes, and that's why I look like I do now. And she's like, oh, I didn't know. You know, and he's like, yeah, you know, heroes, they never brag about what they really do. And Flash sitting there just getting angry because he's like, dude, you're invading my personal life. Like, I know we kind of made that deal during the, uh, you know, the Spider Island storyline or whatever right before it um, where, you know, I might help you guys out, you and your your father, as we find out, uh, Jack Lantern's father, like birth father is not, um, you know, the crime master. He's someone who kidnapped uh, you know, uh, essentially uh, Jack Lantern when he was a kid, when he was a young Jack. Uh, he was kidnapped by this guy when Jack was out trick-or-treating wearing a pumpkin on his head. Uh, he got kidnapped by this guy, locked in his basement, and then through Stockholm Syndrome, started getting attached to him, started calling him father. And then, uh, you know, um, I guess Crime Master nurtured the, the, the impulses, the, the crazy impulses that, um, a crazy is a, a loose term, obviously, but you know, his more destructive impulses. Uh, Crime Master nurtured them and turned Jack and helped him become a bit, essentially a, a sadistic killer. Because Jack already had those impulses when he was younger and he felt like he didn't fit in uh, with his family and stuff. And then he got, those got nurtured by being with Crime Master because Crime Master, when he kidnapped him, kind of saw him for what he was because he was like hurting animals and things like that. So Crime Master taught him how to put like a bomb in a cat. And then it, whenever a cat went missing in the neighborhood, they would find it. They'd put a bomb in it and then deliver the cat back to the, the people it belonged to. And then the bomb would go off and kill the cat and the people that the cat belonged to. I mean, it's like really sick stuff in here. This is not gallows humor stuff. This is just sadistic, creepy, like Rick Remender. Like if I was his editor, I think Steve Wacker might have been an editor on this. I probably would have called Remender and been like, are, are you okay, dude? Like, is everything all right? Because there's some really dark stuff in here when they go into Jack Lantern's uh, origin and kind of where this version of Jack Lantern came from. And, uh, and so anyway, he introduced himself to Betty and Flash doesn't like this, but he also knows he's being watched now by Crime Master and Jack Lantern because they found out who he is, they know his secret identity, and they're trying to kind of blackmail him, get him to use the Venom suit for their own purposes. I don't think they really know that the Venom suit is something that's issued by the government to Flash. So Flash is kind of in a predicament, a predicament here because although he wants to just do this thing for them and just you know, and then go away. Like, that's what he's hoping. Obviously, that's not what ends up happening. But he's like, look, if I do this, you guys go away. And they're like, no, if you if you do this for us and it works, we're going to keep using you for stuff like this. The problem is, is Flash is detected. Anywhere he goes in that suit, the government knows about it. So he, he so they're like, hey, we need you to go to Vegas and take something for us. And he's like, how the hell am I going to get the suit? And how the hell am I going to get to Vegas? Uh, especially after all the Spider Island stuff and everything. Um, what, what, how am I going to pull this off? And so that's kind of his dilemma in this issue. And meanwhile, while he's trying to figure that out, uh, you have Eddie Brock, who is uh, now armoring, uh, arming himself. He's got like all these weapons and guns, and he's uh, ready to go out and uh, and do some damage of some kind. And he has the news report on TV of what he did, you know, because obviously he sacrificed his life as anti venom uh, to save everyone in New York and cure everybody. But then he's like immediately now, like, okay, like, because they show that news broadcast where he's talking about God. And then Rick Remender added this little line of dialogue at the end where Eddie goes a little too dark with his reference to God. Like, you know, like he, you know, because on the actual news, I think from Spider Island, Eddie said something like along the lines like, oh, you know, God forgives all and, you know, he wants us all to do well and blah, blah, blah. In this version, you have all that said. And then at the very end, Eddie says, uh, and trust me, everyone out there who's evil, there's a reckoning coming from God. And that's when the news reporter goes, okay, and, you know, let's, thanks, Eddie, for saving us. So uh, let's go over back to you, Linda, or whatever. And uh, and so so that's kind of, Eddie is now on this, seems on this vengeful kick, which does feel like a left turn based on where he was in 
Spider Island a little bit because in Spider Island he is in the church and he's gathering people and he's curing them and he's saying like he's some kind of savior and he's kind of got like a little bit of a Jesus complex for a moment there. So yeah, Eddie's a little unstable for sure in that regard, uh, but to, for him to just kind of zero in on, all right, let's go buy a bunch of guns because now I'm homeless and I don't have anything and I saved New York and nobody's appreciative of it. And I'm like, well, you were just on the news and like Reed Richards thanked you and Captain America thanked you. Like, it just seemed weird. Like, it just seems like a weird turn, um, especially within like two issues of a comic book. So I, I'm not really like digging this version of Eddie where he's like, I'm gonna armor up and go kill uh, symbiotes and stuff like that. Um, and he's like, especially this new Venom, I gotta figure out more about him and stuff. And so Eddie, that's kind of setting up a story that's gonna come later. So that's kind of what Eddie's doing. And then meanwhile, the government uh, and S.H.I.E.L.D. and everyone is sending in Captain America to shut down Project Rebirth, you know, which is the project he, that created him kind of back in World War II and has been renamed or, or brought back so they can use you know, Venom as Agent Venom. And so he found out where the facility is and he goes to the facility to shut it down and he wants uh, you know, to take custody of the Venom suit. And that gives Flash, though, the opportunity to get out of his predicament. A little convenient, but it makes sense because obviously the government and Captain America probably would want to you know, do something about Venom and Project Rebirth on a personal level. Um, but I don't think he really wants to destroy anything. I think he accepts and understands that uh, that Flash Thompson as Venom saved his life during Spider Island and helped, you know, change him back from a mutated man spider Captain America back into like a regular human Captain America. So I think he appreciates that. But at the same time, it's, it's called Project Rebirth and rarely in Cap's uh, point of view has something like that um, you know, brought something good to the world outside of himself. And so I think he's just a little cautious of it. Plus, he's a soldier. He's, his mission or his orders are to go kind of shut the place down on behalf of S.H.I.E.L.D. and everybody else. So he's going there and he's like, it be better me to do this, who's someone who appreciates that Venom did save his life, as opposed to just them sending in people to shut this down and take it away from you. So while they're there, Flash, you know, decides, all right, I'm going to slink away, go grab the suit and run off with it. And I'll just go to Vegas and I'll do this mission and that'll, you know, and they'll wonder where I am. I'll take, you know, I'll try to find a way to take the chip out so they don't, you know, find me or whatever. So he takes the suit and he leaves, but before he gets away too far, Cap America intervenes and they get into a big fight. And it's actually pretty cool seeing Cap fighting Venom, especially with the Venom that's Flash Thompson because Flash idolizes Cap just like he idolizes uh, Spider-Man. So this battle was really great. I love it. The fighting in the woods kind of reminded me of like a battle that would take place outside of a Weapon X facility because there's snow everywhere and stuff. And so they're getting into this big battle and Venom actually gets the upper hand and he, he knocks uh, Cap down, but then Cap is actually falling to his death. So Venom's like, well, I'm not, I don't want to kill the guy. He's Captain America. So he went, swings down, saves him, and leaves him behind on the ground, uh, you know, and then heads back to the facility. And then when Cap gets back there, he's like, all right, you know, Venom came this way, where is he? And they're like, oh, he actually did return to base. And they're like, great, he did the right thing. So let me sit down and talk with him. I gotta figure out, you know, more about this soldier and, and kind of this project. And they're like, oh, no, 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 he came back all right, but we have some other bad news, Cap. And Cap's like, what? And then you cut to uh, Venom driving Captain America's motorcycle away from the facility. And they're like, yeah, he's long gone. And he took your motorcycle. <laughs> so that's all pretty great. So that makes Cap uh, go to um, the Thunderbolts. And he basically is like, look, I can't send in the Avengers after you know Venom. This is a very top secret thing. And I want to keep things hush hush. And I, want, I don't want this to be in the spotlight or whatever. He's like, so I do need a team to go after Venom but I can't send in the Avengers. So he goes and sees Thunderbolt Ross, AKA the Red Hulk. And he says, can you bring in uh, Venom? And, he, and Red Hulk is like, absolutely. I'll go take care of him for you. So that's gonna set up the next story we're gonna talk about called Circle of Four. Um, and that will also set up Venom joining the Thunderbolts at some point uh, very soon too. So we got a lot of stuff we're gonna cover. And this story does, it sets up in these like three issues, it sets up a lot of plots that are gonna happen in other books coming up, which is pretty great. So uh, that's one thing I like about Remender is he's really good at telling a concise story, but also world building at the same time in a compact space. Like I said, these three issues set up like three other, four other stories, and it still is a complete story in this, in these three issues. So it's pretty awesome. So, you know, what happens is Flash, now that he has a suit, he left Betty behind. You know, he's calling her and he's like, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, like the VA sent me on a mission. And they're like, she's like, you need to find another job if the VA is sending you like two days after your dad died. And he's like, you're right, I, I do. I need to find another job. So when I get back, we'll start job hunting and stuff. And she's like, okay, thank you. And so he's like, all right, let's go. So he goes, he's heading to Vegas. And along the way, he runs into Jack-O-Lantern. And Jack-O-Lantern's like, hey, look, 
you're kind of, we, we have an investment in you. We need to make sure you get to Vegas and uh, steal this thing we need and you got to bring it back to my dad. Uh, so, or my dad, you know, the crime master. And he said, so I'm going to come with you. And if you don't, you know, my dad's going to kill Betty. He's going to kill your mom. Um, so, you know, best if you just fall in line. So Flash doesn't like that, obviously, but he's like, well, look, I'll just steal this thing for them and I'll make it a living hell for them afterwards. And, uh, and, and we'll go from there. And he goes, and hopefully they'll just leave me alone. And that is something that comes up near the end is Jack Lantern's like, look, if you, if you leave me, my family alone, if you don't come after my dad and everything for what we did to you, then we'll leave you guys alone. Like, you know, so that's a deal they kind of come up to. I don't know if they'll stick with it. We'll see as we keep reading. Um, but that is something they come up with kind of at the end of this storyline. So, so Flash and now Jack Lantern on this buddy uh, storyline driving across country getting to Vegas um, along the way they stop at diners where, where Jack Lantern uh, goes a little crazy he kills like a, a waitress and a cook at a, at a diner um, and he's kind of you know he's very psychotic you know and he admits it to Flash and he gives Flash his whole origin story and Flash is like holy cow I knew these bad guys were bad guys but I didn't realize that they were like psychotic like this I didn't realize Crime Master kidnapped a kid and then and then nurtured him into being this horrible killer um he's like i'm in way over my head like i just wasn't prepared for this and uh and so I, it sucks because you don't really get the venom symbiotes perspective on this in some instances like you can hear it talking and hearing the inner monologue of flash but you don't get a ton of because i would have loved if uh you know flash was scared and the symbiote was like we're not scared like just let us kill him and flash like no you know no let's play it his way for now let's see what happens i would have liked a little bit more of that i mean there was a tiny bit of it but i would have liked a little bit more um in in regard to you know the back and forth because then whenever you write a venom story you got to have the symbiote has to have a personality and it shows sometimes but mainly it's just a rage monster you know uh kind of because it's coming off matt gargan so that makes a little bit of sense and so you know flash is trying to teach it and tame it and stuff so it's part of the arc I get, but I still miss it sometimes. I'm like, I wish there's a little bit more back and forth here. Um, overall, though, really great story. Flash gets to Vegas. Uh, he goes undercover, you know, looks as, as human with, with, you know, regrows his legs using the symbiote. And they go into this casino and they try to bust this thing out. They find a secret compartment or secret lab, I guess, within the ca casino. And in there they find the toxin symbiote. And I guess that was pulled off of, you know, um, uh, Mulligan or whatever his name was. Because um, uh, I know Milligan is the, the writer of the guy who created Toxin, um, Peter Milligan. But I think uh, the character's name is like something Mulligan, uh, Pat Mulligan. So he used the same initials. Peter Milligan used his own initials uh, and, and kind of name that rhymes with his a little bit um, to, I don't know, just a little bit of ego there. He's like, like Peter Milligan's like, I'm going to make this guy named Pat Mulligan. It's like, wow, okay, dude, like great yeah. um but uh but i guess they pulled that suit off of him at some point uh so i'm sure one of you guys will let me know if there's a maybe that's coming up in a story where they talk about what happened to pat uh, but right now we have a symbiote and it's been uh captured and venom sees it and, he, and he's like no we have to kill this thing you know because remember in that main story the symbiote is like the 1000th like part of its generation or something and that means it's like some kind of special symbiote or something that could bring destruction or whatever the cause is um so he's like no we got to kill it so he grabs suit tears that out of the the cell or the chamber that it's in the glass chamber and he starts smashing it ripping apart shredding it um and then meanwhile uh jack lantern's like no what are you doing we got to bring it back you know like we i guess that's kind of what they want they want the power that venom has you know they want a symbiote of their own and they're like no you, we gotta you know gotta take it so you know jack and venom get in this big fight and flash loses it and, and goes full monster um full monster venom and so the two of them get into it it's this big brutal battle they fight for a couple pages it's awesome they go through the casino they go out the window they fall to the ground they're fighting in the streets and uh, it's really brutal and really awesome and jack does get away he talks sense into flash which i thought that was pretty cool because normally someone like a jack lantern who's kind of psychotic and out there He's not going to make a thinking rational decision on like how to get through to someone. He's going to try to fight his way through. But when he saw that that was a losing battle, he's, he's like, you know what? Try to appeal to Flash. He's like, Flash, look, I know you hate me. I know I'm a monster, but you're a good guy. And you have Betty at home and your mom at home. And I, I, look, if you just power down now and get control of the suit again, I'll just chalk it up to you not knowing what you're doing. And, and you can calm down and you don't, you don't bother my family and stay away from me and my dad now that we got what we want. 
and you know, and you can go and be with your family and we'll stay away from you. Like, please just let me live. Let me take this away. Mission accomplished. I need to get out of here. I'm going back to see my dad in New York and you can do whatever the hell you want. So I guess that comms flash down. He's like, all right, I'm, maybe I'm free of these guys. Fine. And he's like, so he lets Jack Lantern go and then turns back into, um, you know, to flash and is like, all right, I'm going to, I got to do something very important because I don't know if I can take their word for it. I don't know if I can take Jack Lantern word. He's clearly a monster. So he goes into an alley uh, to where there's a phone booth. He picks it up calls Betty and he basically breaks up with her and he says look uh, you know after everything we've been through I just need some time alone and I think it's just best if we're through like he keeps telling himself tell her your venom just be honest with her and then he decides no just break it off with her break her heart because at least she won't die and she'll be disconnected from you and you can stay lost over here and maybe that'll keep Jacqueline and those guys off your tail until you figure out a plan to go after them I think it's a little too defeatist for Flash like I feel like Flash I know he has, has had his battles and his demons, and I know he continues to struggle with those demons uh, because at the end of this book, he decides instead of going to do something, he uh, falls off the wagon or however the phrase is. Uh, yeah, I think it's off the wagon where he um, goes into an alley, sees a bum after he calls, uh, you know, uh, Betty and, and breaks off with her. He sees like an, uh, a homeless guy in the alley and he goes over, grabs his bottle of scotch and starts drinking again. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to see because it's it's definitely a low point for Flash. Um, like I said, I, I feel like it's a little too defeatist for a guy who's been through so much and is now free of Project Rebirth with the Venom suit. I feel like he can now really do things that, that you know, because he keeps saying, like, without the suit, I'm nothing. With that. So now he has the suit, um, but he is losing control of it for sure. So maybe that plays into the, the, you know, his feelings, like his, his depression is starting to flare back up. And obviously we've seen Remender has done a good job throughout this run so far, showing him go like, all right, should I go to a church where they're having AA meetings, but he can't get in because they don't have a ramp outside. So he, he's like, oh, this is God's sense of humor um, where you know I should, be, I should be able to wheel in here and talk to people that you know my struggles, but apparently God doesn't want me to because they don't have a ramp outside this church because it's an old church. So it's just steps or whatever. And they never remodeled or whatever. So uh, I kind of like those moments. Like, and then Remender sprinkled them without. But still, like, seeing Flash drink, I guess it's just because I don't want him to give up uh, is why, you know, I, I kind of rail against this part of the story. But at the same time, it does add some good drama. And I do, I am curious what's going to happen next. Because if he's at this low of a point after that battle, I'm just worried and curious to see how much lower he is going to go or if he'll go lower or maybe he'll use this moment as a moment to find a way to bounce back. But right now he's drinking and he broke up with Betty and he cut all ties, you know, off with him, his mother and with Betty. So he, so I guess he's thinking that'll mean Jack Lantern won't threaten their lives, but he still feels for Betty. So breaking up with her, I still feel like is a dumb move. But Flash, you know, he's kind of a jock and sometimes he makes dumb calls. So it's kind of in keeping with the character a little bit too. So these issues are really great. Like I said, at the end, uh, Red Hulk is in pursuit of Agent Venom. He's looking for him uh, on behalf of Captain America. We have Eddie Brock out there who's looking for symbiotes to destroy. And the toxin suit is, I, I don't know if all of it got captured by uh, Jack-O-Lantern or some of it or what's going on. So I'm sure we'll find out more about that coming up. I think the next storyline is uh, the four in, uh, a Circle of Four, and that'll deal with Red Hulk first. And then after that, I think we'll get back to the Eddie Brock stuff. So we'll have a lot of, you know, we'll answer a lot of these questions that are set up here. We'll answer a lot of them in the next few videos. Uh, but I'm going to dip back into current comics coming up next. I think after this, we're going to talk about the Sin Rising uh, Spider-Man story. We're going to talk about a couple issues that came out recently. We'll do a video on that. And then we're also going to do a video on some of the recent Venom stuff called Venom Beyond. I think I'm like two issues behind. So I'll probably put both of those into one video and we'll talk about that as well um because i think that's the second part's coming out soon so you know i'll when it comes out i'll buy it i'll read it and then we'll do a video worth both of them together so those should be the next two reviews coming up and then after that we'll dive back into flash we'll do circle of four and then we'll get into i think savage six is after that and uh and then that'll wrap up the remender stuff uh at least for the solo venom stuff but remender will go on to write agent venom in secret adventures so i'm kind of curious how we go from you know cap being saved by venom and then going into shutdown Project Rebirth, 
to rec and then sending in Red Hulk to take down Venom to then recruiting Venom for Secret Avengers. I'm kind of curious how all that's going to play out. So that'll obviously happen over the next few issues, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen in those and, and how that comes to be. Because it does seem a little disjointed right now, but I'm sure the Remender's a very talented writer. I'm sure it's going to flow very nicely. So let me know what you think of these issues, issues 9, 10, 11, and 12 of Venom by Rick Remender. You know, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and uh, and what stories you're looking forward to coming up. Are you looking forward to Circle of Four? Are you looking forward to um, the Savage Six storyline? And then after that, we'll get into the Colin Bunn stuff. I think the Colin Bunn stuff, I'm just going to do all of his run in two videos. So I'm going to like read because I have one trade paperback. It's like that thick. It's called the Colin Bunn Collection. And I think I'm just going to read half of it and we'll make one episode on that. And it'll be like an hour long discussion video. And then we'll do an hour long discussion on the second half. That way we just kind of, not because I want to move through it quickly, but just because, um, you know, I don't want to fall behind on the Flash Thompson stuff again. So, uh, so either that, we'll either do it as two four hour or two one hour videos or four half hour videos um but i'll probably read it all at once and just record all those at once and get those guys you know those episodes up to you guys but after we get through the rest of remender stuff and after we get through some of secret adventures first and thunderbolts so uh, again let me know your thoughts down below and we'll continue our conversation as always down there thanks so much for watching the show as always like share, subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace